Here is our Bio 11 lecture on amino acids and peptide bonds. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, just a long chain of amino acids in exactly the same way that cellulose and starches and glycogen are long chains of glucose. What's different, though, is that in cellulose and starch and glycogen and chitin, every single sugar monomer is exactly the same as every other one. But in a protein, the amino acids are different from each other. So we need to take a look at amino acids. So here's an amino acid. Amino acids are called amino acids because they have amino groups, which you see right here, and carboxyl groups over here. This is the acid part of it. So they function as both a base and an acid. The other two things attached to this central carbon is a hydrogen. And then the side chain. The side chain is what's different between amino acids. And they're all attached to this alpha carbon right here. We want to take a quick look at the 20 amino acids, not because I expect you to memorize their structure, but you should be familiar enough with them that you know an amino acid when you see it. And the first way you're going to know an amino acid is because you're going to see a carbon attached to both an amino group and a carboxyl group. They won't necessarily all be laid out in exactly this orientation, right? The side chain, which is highlighted in white here, might be above the central carbon, uh, the carboxyl group can be on the left, and the, but conventionally they're drawn this way. Now the first thing I want you to notice, and this was the case on the previous slide as well, that the, both the amino group and the carboxyl group are, show, are drawn as charged entities. Right. The amino, right, a base means it can accept a proton, and so this amino group has accepted an additional proton. So it has this, and an acid, the definition of an acid is that it gives up a proton, and so the carboxyl group is shown that way. It, it doesn't have to be drawn this way. Uh, you could draw it with both in the uncharged position. It's equally correct. All right, so here on the, uh, some amino acids have uh, charged uh, side chains, either positively charged or negatively charged, and just like the amino groups and the carboxyl groups, the positive charge comes from an amino group, right, and the negative charge comes from a carboxyl group. In the polar amino acids, polar but uncharged, there are five of them. Three of them have hydroxyl groups, and of course we're familiar hydroxyl group here, hydroxyl group on threonine, and hydroxyl group on tyrosine. And of course we're used to thinking about hydroxyl group as charged entities. And the other two, asparagine and glutamine, they have amino groups, but the amino groups in this conformation are less likely to be fully charged. It's more like there's just a partial charge. The special cases, cysteine, glycine, and proline, let's take them in a different order. Proline is a special case because the side chain forms a covalent bond with the amino group. Glycine is a special case because it just has a hydrogen as a side chain, the smallest thing it could possibly be. And cysteine is a special case because this sulfur group is going to form covalent bonds with other cysteines and make crosslinks between polypeptide chains. And we'll come back and talk about that in a bit in another lecture. And then the nonpolar hydrophobic side chains, as you would expect, it's an just pretty much nothing but carbon, right? In one case, we've got some nitrogen here, but this nitrogen is pretty much overwhelmed, sort of lost in a sea of carbon. So the over, overwhelming chemical uh, entity here, because it's, it's mostly carbon and hydrogen, is hydrophobic. And this sulfur here, because it's not on the end, it's covalently bonded already to two carbons, which it's not going to release as easily as a hydrogen. Uh, it's, this sulfur does not form any cross chains with anything else in, in methionine. Amino acids are linked together with peptide bonds or peptide linkage. Now, again, in this drawing that I have from your textbook, it shows 
both the carboxyl group and the amino group in the charged orientation. Now I sort of wish that they had shown it in the uncharged, but that's okay. Uh, what we have here is you're gonna you have a oxygen with its extra electron and we have one hydrogen here. We just need an extra proton from over here and then we're gonna left with a covalent bond forming between the two amino acids. This gives us what we call the backbone of the polypeptide. Over here, nitrogen, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, carbon. And then the next amino acid, the next will be added, the next peptide bond is gonna be added here to this carboxyl group. So just like in polysaccharides, polypeptides, grow at one end. That is, they don't grow from both ends. They only grow at one end, and so we're always adding new amino acids at the carboxyl end. And so we refer to the two ends as the N or the amino terminus, and you can see that here, and the carboxy terminus or C terminus, which is over here. And that concludes our talk about amino acids.